Hello everybody and welcome to number 27. Today I'm here with Matthew from uh, London Electric Cars and we're going to be talking a little bit about everything that he does. So he actually converts old classic cars to the run on electric. So obviously that's a bit of an anathema to some people but I think it is going to be the way of the future for lots of us. So it's going to be really worth sort of exploring what he's doing and how he's doing it. So first of all, we'll get a bit of background from Matthew about why he started the business. And then afterwards, we'll take out his uh, Morris Minor, which has been converted. Uh, and I'll be able to tell you how it feels. The reason I got started converting classic cars to electric um, was because I'm a Londoner. Um, I'm born and bred here. And uh, it's become patently obvious that Pollution is a massive problem. So uh, I was keen to get into electric cars. I think they're um, an important development. There are a billion cars in the world. What are we going to do with those cars? I've always tinkered with classic cars. Um, and so I know that running a classic car in London can actually be very affordable. Certainly cars like the Morris Minor, um, the, the Triumphs, that kind of stuff, they're actually very, very cheap to run. Um, you know, you, I can replace the entire rear axle of this car for 50 pounds. I came across um, some companies in California um, who've converted Beatles, and I just thought it was a fabulous idea. So I set about to make myself an electric car. So sometimes I get criticised for taking what some people might consider to be the beating heart out of um, a classic car. There's a bunch of different ways we, we manage that. Firstly, um, there are certain cars where there is a historical imperative, um, and, and I would caution people against converting some of those. However, the majority of classic cars are, are used and loved um, and part of the family. Um, and, and I think in the future, people will struggle to run petrol engines. Petrol will become increasingly difficult to get. Um, frowned upon. I think it'll be viewed in the same way as someone smoking. Um, if you were to light a cigarette in a crowded area, people would turn around and ask you what you're doing. And I think you'll see the same thing if you drive a petrol engine into the centre of town. Um, people will say, what are you doing? The other way we deal with it is we try and do our installations in such a way that there's no cutting or welding. So we don't actually affect the car. Uh, everything's fully reversible. So you could potentially keep the engine in a crate. The situation so arises that later on you want to return it back to a petrol car. You can very easily do that. I reckon it would take you a day or two. I would also say that the, the, the motor is not the beating heart of a car. There's many parts that make a classic car a classic car. Um, this 1953 Morris Minor still requires its trunnions to be greased once a month. Um, it still has the same steering. You know, it has all the, the frailties and wonders that is a 1950s car. Um, and believe me, Despite the fact that it's got an electric motor, there are still plenty of little gremlins in the, light, in the electric system and all that kind of thing to keep any classic car enthusiast uh, very busy. We're developing kits um, that allow people to convert the car themselves. Um, and that's the real goal. It isn't so much to do conversions ourselves, it's to develop kits to allow the home mechanic to convert the car themselves. Here we have a customer's car. It's a 1969 Land Rover Series 2A, and we've just received it. We're literally in the process of, of stripping it so that we can begin the conversion. The big petrol motor comes out. Um, you're left with the gearbox, um, and we take the flywheel off the motor. We create a union between, that will go on the electric motor that then couples to the flywheel, and then a mount that basically enables that assembly to mount onto the gearbox. Variety of mounts and so on to, to allow the motor to sit in here with the controller and all the gizmos you need. Battery boxes quite regularly go up, up front as well. So the engine, the whole engine, the old, what was actually in this? It was a... Perkins 2.25. And then that's gonna be replaced by this by little some, electric motor. Yes, um, and, you, and you'll see that the size of it is, is remarkable, how small it is. And yeah, so that basically fits in. It'll end up sort of, if you think the electric, the big petrol motor used to end up about here with yeah. the radiator around there, the electric motor will end up probably around here. They're yeah. tiny by comparison. Yeah, and it'll end up having roughly the same horsepower as the Perkins and, and considerably more torque. What about the batteries? What are the specs going to be on this particular car? So this car is going to have probably 30 um, 160 amp hour um, Thunder Sky Prismatics. Um, it's going to give it about 16 kilowatt hours. So, you know, and, and that gives you the equivalent range, sort of 
50, 60 miles, which in this particular instance is exactly what he needs. He's using it for short journeys, regular daily short journeys. Let's talk a little bit about the, um, the Mino, which sure. is the one that we're going to take out for a drive. Yep. Is this the first car that you actually converted? So this yes. is your own yes. personal car? This will be for sale, but yes, for now it's, it's our, effectively our prototype. So um, these are the batteries. Are yep. these all of them or are there more? In no, the so there's, there's 25 in total in this car. Um, there's nine up front. Yep. Uh, so there's nine here and there's another 16 in the boot. Wow, okay. Um, which they go where the old petrol tank used to be. And what, so what's the capacity on this? So this is a 13 kilowatt car. Okay. Um, so it's good for about 40 miles. Okay. And now the one thing to be aware of, I think, mm. is that actually 40 miles may not sound like that much, but actually in town, yes. for an electric car, yes. 40 miles is 40 miles, no matter yeah. what the traffic is absolutely, like, right? Because when yeah. you're sitting there doing nothing, yeah. It's not using any energy. Absolutely. So. And the average journey in London is around five miles, and it generally takes you about an hour to yeah. do five miles. I drive around every day in it, yes. and I probably do around five miles a day, uh, maybe a bit more. Um, I charge it once a week. Um, it costs a pound to charge. Wow. So my running costs for the entire year for the yeah. car are around 50 pounds. Oh my God, that's yeah. incredible. And listen, just a quick question yes. here. I noticed there's a normal car battery yep, there. Yep. What's it doing there? So that runs everything that you touch. So the 12, so lighting, stereo, indicators, oh, all see. that kind of stuff. Yeah. And equally, the electronics up the top here yeah. is all standard and we've done yeah. nothing to it. Um, so it really shows that this is a bolt-in system. You've basically literally uh, bolted onto the existing yeah. motor mounts. Yeah. Um, this is, as I say, it's a prototype, so we've welded to the bolt kit, but our new version yeah. actually bolts to the suspension mounts. Okay. Um, so there's, there's no cutting, no welding. Um, it literally bolts in, screws in on top yeah. of the existing wiring loom. Yeah. So let's say, let's take this car as a basis. Yeah. So this yeah. has a range of about um, 40, 40 miles. miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for a setup like this, yeah. what would a, an indicative cost be? To repeat be? this conversion, um, if you bought me a car, um, it would be about nine thousand pounds. Okay. Um, and for the kit alone, if someone else was to do it, um, it they'd probably save a couple grand on our labour. Okay. Um, so you'd probably be looking around seven, something okay. like that. We offer the the fabricated parts separately from the motor, from the batteries. We send them the kit, that's uh, around £3,000. And then uh, it's up to them to source the motor and the batteries themselves. Okay, well, let's take it out for a spin. Yeah, uh, brilliant. Well, this is going to be, well, I have driven a Tesla before, but I've never <laughs> driven an old car with It won't be engine. quite so fast. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Right, Matthew, we're in the car. So just tell me what to do. So it's, it's in neutral. It's in neutral at the moment. So you can technically just put it straight into gear. Okay. Um, because obviously the motor's not spinning at the moment. So I don't need to have my foot on yep. the brake or you're anything? You're on, you're ready to go. If you had put the foot on the accelerator, it would spin. But okay. So, second gear. Yeah, you might want to take the handbrake off. Okay. And then just... Off you go. Feels so unnatural, right. Wow, that is really, really easy. The progression, that's great. You've got it really well sorted. I, I, I wondered whether it would be hard to judge and... So we're here in Westminster, which is a great place, I think, for this... Uh, Lovely old car. So I'm in second gear at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and essentially, I could run like this all day, right? Yeah. You can drive like an automatic, just staying in second gear. But we can also be moved up to fourth, and that makes it a bit quieter Absolutely, as well. Yes. Yeah. So you've got a gearbox, so you can you can drive it like a manual car if you want okay. to. You can downshift into corners. You can uh, use the um, motor braking because it's got regenerative braking on it. Um, oh, it's got regenerative braking. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So I pull in the clutch. And then fourth gear, wow. Um, yeah, no, absolute silence. The first thing that, that strikes me, obviously you don't have the engine noise and all the rest of it, but it does still feel like a classic to me, just the way it rides and everything else. It's so much easier to drive. Yeah. Here with modern traffic, there's none of the stress that you have with another car where you have to have it in the right gear and you're also worried about keeping up. You know, with the traffic, this is just pretty effortless. Oh look, there, I put it in neutral. That's like yeah, just yeah, a force of habit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've also put the clutch down, which is... Oh yeah, which you don't need to do when you've come yeah, to a stop, yeah. do you? Um, and there's a bit of uh, engine braking yes, there as well. Yeah, yeah, well no, so if you're, next time you're driving along in traffic, yeah. just stay off the brake. Okay. And you'll find um, it, it is more than powerful enough to... And does that feed it. back yes, to the battery yes, pack? Yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So it, re it returns about 10% of the power. Wow, so when you so lift off the throttle, you are actually generating yes, power? Yes, exactly. Right, everyone. Well, I have to tell you, it's actually... It, it, it's still like a really fun experience driving this car. It's... Um, 
it's not quite what I expected. I did think that without having the engine, it would really dull the experience and really make it quite a difficult thing to enjoy. But in actual fact, in many ways, it's actually better for driving in town. It means that you can relax with the car, you can keep up with the traffic pretty easily. Um, so it's a more relaxing experience. Yes, you don't have the sort of character of that sort of uh, engine vibrating at the front. And, um, you know, there's a lot to be said for that, but there is a lot to be said for this as well. And as Matthew said, it reduces costs greatly and it makes these lovely old cars more accessible to people who might otherwise not use them. Um, so, you know, I, I like it. I'm pretty impressed and I think there is definitely a place for this going forward. Um, so Matthew, thank you very much for having sort of taken me through, shown me your, your workshop and for, you know, having let me drive the car. I really appreciate it. Lovely. Brilliant. Thank you everyone for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, click through to the, actually I think it's over there on the screen, to my um, Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I'll also put a link obviously to Matthew's uh, website yep. uh, in, in the uh, description of the video. Thank you.